What is going on, my fellow Fetty Tedu Madoshis? Oh my god, this chapter. Now, I have to apologize, first off, that I have not been reviewing Fairy Tale how I should have. I had to give it a break. You know, I still love the fuck out of this anime and manga, but just some of the latest chapters put a horrible taste in my mouth. I have been reading them as they came out, but I could not just bring myself to sit down and give it a legitimate review. The chapter that just completely ruined it for me was the Urza chapter when she whooped, I it wasn't Sailor, I forget her name, the demon that raised her pain senses and she's blind and deaf, all that stuff, and she still whooped her ass, and the only explanation that we got was because she's Urza. That really put a bad taste in my mouth, and even after that I kept on reading and hoping it would get better, and it did, but then there were things like Mard Gear versus the Dragon Slayers, how the fuck? How the fuck did Rogue and Sting survive that huge attack by Mark Gear that was supposed to guarantee death? I understand Natsu because Grey came in there and helped him out, but no one was there to stop it from hitting uh, Sting and Rogue, so how are they still alive even though they're pretty fucked up, you know? But just stuff like that put a bad taste in my mouth. But I couldn't help but feel that some of this arc was just like, you know, they're going to win no matter what, even though we already know that because they're the good guys and the good guys win, but they just seem to be coming out on top for bullshit reasons. But this chapter completely, completely rekindled the flame in my heart for fairy tale. Not saying that I disliked it. I mean, some of the chapters were bullshit in my eyes. You might, you guys may have liked it, but this just completely just brought my faith back in this. I mean, Zeref disappeared just as fast as he did up here and he killed Margear right there in front of everyone. I think he did. He's not really clear, but I'm assuming he did. He says that it's okay. You know, I don't have to die right now and is it going to be my death? Natsu is going to be the one that defeats me. Even though he did not directly say that, we know that that's what he wanted at some point in the series. He's actually stated that and just how he looked at Natsu. He wants him to be the one to defeat him for whatever reason. And I like how they said that, well, you you created and to kill yourself, right? And he's like, yeah, well, I'm taking it back. And he just walks away. And this dude straight up says, if Acnologia does not fuck shit up, don't worry, because I will fuck shit up. And that's what I love in my villains, man. Just so sinister, but yet cocky with it. And just so calm. I mean, this guy... He's not shouting, yelling, doing anything. He's just as laid back as he can be. Walked up, took the book, said some epic shit, then walked away into the shadows. I mean, Zeref is an amazing villain. And you guys know the main thing in this chapter, Igneo. Now, before I get to that, let me say that the fact that he said that he planted antibodies within Natsu that would just about guarantee he would never turn to a dragon, he says... He is almost sure, like there is almost no possible way. But the fact that he said that there is almost no way that he would turn into a dragon, that just tells me that at least one of the dragon slayers are going to turn into a dragon some point in this series. And I cannot wait. I mean, when you turn into a dragon, do you automatically turn evil like Acnologia? Was he evil before he became a dragon? It's very unclear. But let's talk about the finale the fucking finale of Igneo versus Acnologia. Now, Acnologia is, is just taunting the fuck out of Igneo, saying, you're the king of the flame dragons, this is all you can do. And he says that, well, I was asleep for some time, so forgive me for not being at my 100%. And he's yelling at Natsu, and I just love the scene when he's coming up to him, yelling back at the top of his lungs, and Acnologia is sitting there pounding on top of him. You even see blood come out of his mouth at one point. And he's still talking to Natsu, and he, like, he has to hear these words, man. And, oh, my God, oh, my God. When Natsu got there and they went airborne, when they went airborne, when Igneo ripped off Acnologia's arm, I thought that was it. I thought Igneo finally got, you know, some arms up or something. I thought he was about to whoop his ass. But then the next page, when the panel zoomed down to, bruh, that dude's dragon belly was gone. I mean, just a huge chunk of it missing. I was like, oh my God. And that's what I missed in the fairy tale, man. The surprises. Like, like over the past few chapters, there has not been any surprises to me. I mean, there have been power-ups and epic things, but 
like I said, this chapter, you know, nothing holds a candle to this chapter in this arc, nothing. That, like, Igneo, the king of the flame dragons, dragon that not so much trying to get back to the entire series from episode one, he is killed. So it seems, I mean, half of his like lower body is broken off. He says some epic last words to Natsu and Agnologia does his big beam and we see Agnologia, I mean we'll see Igneo like disintegrate in it like some Dragon Ball Z cell shit. I'm like, this dude is dead unless the dragons can do some type of OP revival technique and bring him back from the dead or maybe they go gather the Dragon Balls or something. But from my point of view, Igneo is done. And just the fact that Igneo says all the days that I've spent with you have been the best of my life. It made me the happiest I've ever been. And I've been with you this entire time, day after day. Just those words makes me believe that Igneal is actually dead, at least for now. I mean, damn, did you see Natsu's face? He's about to go in. Now, um, I really can't remember, but I don't think we've ever seen Natsu get like a Super Saiyan power. And by that, I mean, we've never seen him just get so angry that his his strength just improves like that he's always ate some type of strange fire or turned someone else's attack back around at him but this chapter seeing his father die this dude is about to go the fuck in i would not be surprised if the flames inside of his body just burned away those antibodies and he became a dragon right now that would be epic if he could turn to a dragon and turn back that would be fucking awesome that would be like the most OP shit ever. That would be like the ultimate dragon slaying magic. But I don't see how that could happen because, you know, the dragons trying to prevent their dragon slaying children to become dragons. That makes it seem like they can't turn back. Like, why else would they try to prevent that if they can't return to their human form? So, man, I just am so fucking hyped. Natsu is about to go in. I'm not sure how he's about to go in, but I know he is, man. I mean, Igneal himself is just destroyed in front of his son. Natsu has been talking about Igneal forever, and oh my god, Natsu, <laughs> I cannot wait to see what this dude is about to do to Acnologia. I mean, it, it would be kind of bullshit in a way, that he would just power up and be able to take on Acnologia if that is the case when Igneal himself couldn't. But then again, you have to think about how much they mean to each other. I would not be surprised if he sacrifices all of his magic to become this OP badass just like similar to what Gon did in Hunter x Hunter. That would be fucking amazing. Now I'm sorry you guys know that watch my reviews. I usually try to put some comedy in here, throw some jokes, but I am just straight up legit hyped as fuck that this fairy tale chapter has rekindled my love for fairy tale. I'm not, not saying that I hated it, but it just didn't seem worthwhile for me to review. I mean, other reviewers still reviewed it and everything. I'm not saying the chapters were bad, but it just put a bad taste in my mouth. But this has single-handedly, like the last few pages have single-handedly made me catch up to the fairy tale anime, even though not much is going on. The filler isn't all that, but it's fucking hilarious. And I I promise I'm not going to miss another fairy tale review if I can help it. The manga anyway. I can't promise if I'll review this filler that we're in. But fuck, man. Just Zeref coming in, saying some awesome shit, exiting, seeing the finale of, man, just, just the fact that, that Igneo ripped off his arm first and... That made me think that, okay, Igneo is about to win. Acnologia owned Igneo harder than Igneo owned Acnologia. And I was like, fuck. I mean, I cannot believe... That shit got me, yo. It really got me. And this is actually more of a rant than a review, so I'll probably put that in the title. But, fuck. <laughs> Natsu's face, man. That, I mean, oh my god. I cannot wait to see next chapter. This shit is about to go in. But I'm so sorry. This, this review has been more of like a fangirl session than a review, and I apologize for that, but fuck, I I mean, I have not been so excited for Fairy Tale since Igneo first showed up, period. I mean, this chapter is just huge. You know, whether he's dead or alive, this completely just rekindled the flame of my heart for this epic, epic series. But tell me what you guys think. Do you think he's really dead? Because how I see it, unless Igneo has some OP healing abilities or the other dragons come in and do something, like maybe um, Grandini has... I mean, we know that she has healing abilities, but can she heal Igneo in his current state? I mean, his entire 
like belly section is gone and he looks like he got disintegrated in Agnologia's blast. So, I mean, it is sad if this is the end of Agnil, this is so sad that he did not have a chance to sit down and talk to Natsu, which is the only reason why I do believe he may still be alive or he can be healed because that has not happened yet. But fuck, man, I, I don't know what to make of this shit, yo. It's just so epic. But anyway, I'm going to go because I'm going, I could keep on rambling about this shit all day. Tell me what you guys think Zeref is up to. Do you think Igneel is actually dead? What is Natsu going to do next chapter, yo? Oh my God, this has been JV Dutch here. Like, comment, subscribe, and I'm out.